Thank you to Preserve Gold for being a sponsor of our Newsmax podcast. Thinking about investing in physical gold or silver but not sure who you should trust? The folks at Preserve Gold are the perfect partner and highly rated for all your precious metal needs. Text the word DAILY to 50505 and get up to $10,000 in free gold and silver and to learn more today from Preserve Gold. Hello everyone and welcome to the Newsmax Daily Podcast. It is Thursday, May 16th and my name is Kay Smythe. I'm filling in for the always brilliant Tony Marino today while he's out on vacation, but rest assured he'll be back in next week so you won't have to sit there asking yourself, what is her accent much longer? Um, I'm Welsh for anyone wondering. I'm from the same city as Catherine Zeta-Jones and the poet Dylan Thomas. And uh, wouldn't you know, us Welsh love a good debate. We are very angry people. It's how we fought off the Romans all those years ago, kept them at bay as much as we could. And uh, we talked about the power of a good debate on the show. I believe it was yesterday, maybe the day before. So today we're going to continue with that theme. Only this time we're focusing on the news that President Joe Biden will be debating former president and 2024 presidential candidate Donald Trump. Our first clip today comes from Rob Schmidt tonight, uh, where he chatted with the fantastic Laura Trump about what this debate means for her father-in-law and the American people. So let's check it out. Laura Trump joins us now. Good to have you on tonight. Uh, I, I thought it was amazing how fast uh, Donald Trump agreed to debate Joe Biden, even totally on Joe Biden's terms. I thought it was amazing. Yeah, he caught his bluff. I think yeah. you're exactly right, Rob. They thought that there was a chance that Donald Trump was going to say, OK, well, here's all of the the things that I need <laughs> if we're going to do this, because Joe Biden obviously has given himself every possible advantage here. They have no audience for these debates because we know, Rob, that any audience is going to be cheering on Donald Trump anywhere in this country. He mm -hmm. has the ability to decide exactly when these are going to happen. As you point out, some very Joe Biden friendly media outlets to host all of these. Of and Donald Trump just said, yeah, I'm ready. As I said, anytime, anywhere, any place. And that really is the mark of a true fighter. They say, I don't need anything to help me out. I'm able to do this by myself with no cheating, with no assistance whatsoever. Yeah. And the interesting thing I think to see will be, of course, Joe Biden has to get through a debate. He actually has to make coherent sense and form sentences up yeah. on stage. But he also then has to defend a horrific record. That is going to be very challenging for him. Get the popcorn ready, folks, because this is going to be an epic knockout like you've never seen before. It's, it's going to be it's going to be wild to watch, and it's coming up here in, in just only about five six weeks. You know, but Biden pretending uh, it, trying to pretend only two debates is normal. Even so, I'll even do it twice as if we're supposed to be impressed by two debates. It's not. Uh, and also mandating these rules, including one to avoid moments like this. Take a look. It is uh, it's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country because you'd be in jail. So, I mean, that, that's what the he doesn't want Trump to be able to talk because right. he, he knows that he's got the quick mind and he's got the quick wit. He also doesn't want the audience there to go nuts when Trump makes these points. So he's he's managing all the optics of this debate to make it as agreeable to himself as possible. And he's also got very agreeable moderators out there that when Biden starts spewing his lies, Trump's going to be muted, not going to be able to interrupt and call him out. And of course, the moderators aren't going to say anything anyways, because they're, they're going to be going along with it. Yeah, but as you kind of pointed out in your monologue, Rob, Almost what they have done to Donald Trump with this lawfare, the way that he has truly had the deck totally stacked against him yeah. all the way up until this moment has prepared him for this. He's used to being the underdog. He's used to having everything thrown his way. And he always comes out on top. It's really incredible to see. And I don't think this will be any different. That moment, though, right there that you just played from that was the St. Louis debate, the second debate, I believe, yep. in 2016 between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. That was one of the epic turning points, I feel, in that campaign. From that moment on, Donald Trump really had a tailwind behind him, and Hillary Clinton was fighting every step of the way after that. They thought that was going to be the debate to take Donald Trump down, but to your point, it was that moment that changed everything around. And uh, here we are today with Donald Trump running for his second term in office. 
it's something else. And they, they, again, they're trying as hard as they can to remove the possibility of any of those moments. They want this to be very boring. Uh, they want people to change the channel. They don't want it to be combative. They don't want it to be a debate. They just want it yeah. to be, here's 30 seconds for you, and now 30 seconds for you, and now 30 seconds for you. And again, the moderators are not going to be calling out Joe Biden's lies. They're, they're going to let him get away with murder in this thing. We know that. Of course. Um, <laughs> go ahead. And Rob, just one more point. Whenever the announcement video is 13 seconds and you have five jump cuts, you know they spent like the whole day putting this together with Joe Biden, getting him to get all revved up for this and actually making sense enough to mm -hmm. put this video together. You know that's pretty bad, and yeah. that's re really where we are in this country right <laughs> boy, now. Boy, Very did sad. They, boy, did they juice him for that video, too. So many good points there by, by both of these beautiful people. Um, I think the one that hit me the hardest was the fact that Biden doesn't want an audience at the debate. Why? Because they'd probably laugh their bums off at him. Oh, and like that announcement video, we'll dig more into that in a moment. Uh, but up next, we've got Carl Higby's Frontline. Um, and Carl just gives the most excellent explanation about Biden's list of demands for his debate with Trump. DJT, he said, anytime, anywhere, any place. And Joe Biden came out and said, OK, with my media sycophants at CNN and ABC, with my rules, my moderators cho of my choosing and no one in the audience. And, and they were probably thinking that, like, well, Trump's going to argue with this. Nope. Invite accepted. Thursday, June 27th is the day. And there's a second one on Tuesday, September 10th on ABC. And I am sure I will bet my bottom dollar that the Biden campaign is freaking out right now. They never thought Trump was going to agree to those terms. Biden is so far gone, though he probably actually thinks that he can do fine on this. But let's be honest. This is a guy who just released a video that was 14 seconds long and it had five cuts in it. Donald Trump lost two debates to me in 2020. And since then, he hadn't shown up for debate. Now he's acting like he wants to debate me again. Well, make my day, pal. I'll even do it twice. So let's pick the dates, Donald. I hear you're free on Wednesdays. First off, Biden won no debates. And, and I hear you're free on Wednesdays. And then they go and offer to schedule the debate on a Tuesday and a Thursday. I, like, I don't know if they're like hoping that most people are on vacation or not. I don't know, whatever. But that video had five cuts in it. Don't tell me it was for like effect and emphasis and editing. This was 100% because this guy couldn't shoot a video for 14 seconds. Trump, on the other hand, does like extemporaneous speeches for two hours, sometimes twice a day, sometimes even after being glued to a chair in a courtroom. This isn't even going to be close. I will bet the farm, too, that this whole thing was choreographed. There is no way. Folks, I work for one of these networks. There is no way you would reach a date of acceptance with not one, but two major networks in under 60 minutes from when this transpired. Give me a break. The White House definitely went to like CNN and ABC probably weeks ago to plan this out. And did you really think it's like a coincidence that this came out like the, on the one recess day, too, of court when Trump wasn't at the center of the news cycle? Look, I was born at night, not last night. Biden is trying to keep this tough guy image up. But who, by the way, is not even it's not even Joe Biden tweeting this stuff. It's some 25 year old staffer in the West Wing that I guarantee is unsupervised. They tweeted out, Trump says he'll arrange his own transportation. I'll bring my plane, too. I plan on keeping it for another four. Your plane? You mean the taxpayer's plane? Air Force One? The only thing you're keeping Joe Biden for the next four years or going to need to keep is a good attorney for when Trump's DOJ does to you exactly what you just tried to do to him. Don't even get me started on your son Hunter and his gun charge. That might not even be wrapped up by the debate. We might be in the heat of that one. And this gets even better, too. They couldn't just say yes. The Biden campaign came out with like a ton more criteria for this. Jen O'Malley, the Biden campaign chair, said, quote, Biden's campaign also objects to audiences, which it describes as ruckus or disruptive partisans and donors who consume valuable debate time with noisy spectacles of approval and jeering. Yeah, that you know what that translation here. We got to get Joe the hell off this stage as fast as possible before the meds wear off. Can't can't run the risk of him getting too far off script. She, she went even further to try to justify how they're trying to control absolutely every angle of this, saying, quote, as was the case with the original televised debates in 1960. 1960! 
A television studio with just the candidates and moderators is a better, more cost-effective way to proceed. This is, stop blowing smoke. Cost-efficient? This guy gave $100-plus billion in loan forgiveness to students who have useless degrees in things like art and basket weaving and lesbian dance theory or whatever else. $130 billion to losing a war in Ukraine. You have spent $500 million from your campaign coffers on media ads that no one watches and are the brunt of most of the criticism about your absolute failures over the last three and a half years. No one watches these. When they come on, people get up and use that time to go to the bathroom or let the dog in. And you're going to tell me now that Joe Biden, the money printer in chief, cares about cost effective options? Right. Sure. He's not even paying for it. The next networks would be paying for it. Oh, my God. You spend millions of dollars paying out stupid teenage influencers on TikTok, the platform, uh, by the way, that you, you want to ban, and you think it's a waste of money to allow an audience into a debate that will be watched by more people than the Super Bowl, probably? Do not gaslight me. And you can catch me and Sean Farage tonight with Carl Higby and every Thursday for the Culture Clash segment, um, always between 5 and 6 p.m. Usually, well, just watch the whole show. It's so worth it. Watch everything on Newsmax, always. But let's circle back now to something that Carl brought up at the start of his monologue. The editing made to Biden's debate announcement video, which like when I saw this video, I was like, is this a deep fake? You know, those things that like AI makes, I don't know, all of it terrifies me. Uh, Chris Salcedo of the Chris Salcedo show dug into just how weird it is that Biden made so many edits to the video. But he also gave his analysis last night on just the whole thing. Now, it might seem like I'm laboring the point today about how strange Biden's demands were, how strange that he made so many edits to the video. But I think it's really important. And I think one of the things that Newsmax does really well is offer so many different voices on similar subject matter that's really important to you. Like, I think it's really important to get as many different takes as possible. And, you know, like while Carl's is always so energetic, so uh, emphatic and funny, really, I think Chris Salcedo, his delivery is really different to Carl's. One of the more often used and often proven Salcedo show axioms is axiom number four. Leftists project qualities onto others that they themselves have in abundance. Said in a more concise way, Democrats are guilty of what they accuse others. That's the focus of today's preamble. The left is often accusing conservatives of racism. Just today on X, I responded to a libs of TikTok post that alleged a Dallas math teacher was grotesquely and inappropriately introducing sexual content in his GovEd classroom. I simply responded, education, freedom, and parental school choice now. There's the quote on your screen. Some lunatic leftists responded to that by saying, quote, Straight up racism on par with the direct calls for segregation and whites only drinking fountains, end quote. My call for education freedom was falsely called racist because that's how these left wingers win arguments these days. As you know, the left wing gets up every day trying to think of ways to use government's awesome power to steal your rights. And they will lie, cheat, steal and do anything to preserve their power over you. While they lie and accuse us of racism falsely, they ignore actual racists on their side. A plan that states those jobs that we are in high demand, we could expedite. How do we have a large body of people that are in our city and country that are excellent swimmers and at the same time we need lifeguards? And the only obstacle is that we won't give them the right to work to become a lifeguard. (laughs) There's the leftist mayor of New York, where the majority of government is socialist, by the way, classifying millions of illegal aliens from 168 countries who broke into America as good swimmers, presumably because they had to swim the Rio Grande to break into America. Mayor Adams isn't the only racist on the left. The former mayor of Chicago, a Democrat and a bigot towards white people, infamously said she would only grant one-on-one interviews with reporters of color. Her racism against whites was either ignored or celebrated on the left. And let's not forget the biggest racist of all the Democrats. 
Have you taken a cognitive no, test? No, I haven't taken a test. Why the hell would I take a test? Come on, man. That's like saying you, before you got in this program, you take a test where you're taking cocaine or not. What do you think, huh? Or are you a junkie? What do you say? What you all know, but most people don't know, unlike the African-American community, with notable exceptions, the Latino community is an incredibly diverse community. If you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. Speaking of Joe Biden, he has come out and boldly declared that he will debate President Trump twice instead of the traditional three times. Donald Trump lost two debates to me in 2020. And since then, he hadn't shown up for debate. Now he's acting like he wants to debate me again. Well, make my day, pal. I'll even do it twice. So let's pick the dates, Donald. I hear you're free on Wednesdays. Did you, did you notice how many edits were made to get 14 seconds of video? Joe Biden has issued a list of demands with that debate that we'll detail later. Those demands are geared to disadvantage President Trump and hide Biden's obvious mental decline. The demands are so outrageous, like insisting that only left-wing biased moderators participate. That The Biden campaign is hoping Trump will turn the debate down unless he agrees to all of Biden's outrageous and unfair demands. They would then call Trump the coward. In truth, it is the left who are the cowards. They know that Joe Biden can't hold his own against Trump. That's why they insist that the biased left-wing press be brought in to run cover for Joe Biden. The unfair press, like Joe Biden, will pretend that he hasn't been in power for the last three and a half years and will try to make the debate a referendum on President Trump using the failed lawfare trials as the primary source of their questions, even though the trials are collapsing under the weight of Democrat corruption as we speak. The Compromised Commission on Presidential Debates and outlets like CNN will never ask Joe Biden why he's lied to the country so often, in particular, this lie. Five former heads of the CIA, both parties, say what he's saying is a bunch of garbage. Nobody believes it except the, his and his good friend, Rudy Gianni. You mean the laptop is now another Russia, Russia, Russia hoax? You that's got exactly it. what is this that's where you exactly go? what this is going. where he's going. We are going to wrap up the show today with a few words from RNC spokesman Tommy Piggott. Again, while we like to have a lot of fun here at Newsmax, I feel like this interview, again, from Chris Salcedo, is just really, really informative. And if you're a voter, um, we went through this earlier. I'm not from here, so I'm not a voter. But if you are one, I think this next clip is going to be really important for you. So take it away, Chris. For more on what we can expect, we're joined by RNC spokesman Tommy Piggott. It's good to see you, sir. Uh, so, so we have CNN and ABC News noted left-wing biased and unfair networks. If President Trump agrees to Joe Biden's demands for leftist networks, will the RNC at least insist that a right-leaning network host at least one debate or at least insist on conservative moderators being allowed to ask some questions? Look, fighting for fair debates has been a central tenet of the RNC for years, and we're going to continue that fight for fair debates. Ultimately, what we're seeing with Joe Biden is that, like you mentioned, he's only agreeing to two instead of the normal three debates. We believe there should even be more than that because he's afraid of debates. We're dealing with a president right now and Joe Biden who's afraid to answer questions. So our call here at the RNC, the Trump campaign, has been anywhere, anytime, any place because we believe Americans deserve to see that debate. So we're going to keep fighting for fair debates, but we need to make sure those debates happen as well. Uh, like I said, anywhere, anytime, any place, because we believe President Trump will wipe the floor with Joe Biden. Joe Biden doesn't stand a chance. Well, Tommy, just, just so that everybody here watching on Newsmax knows, is it, is it possible that we're going to watch two debates between these candidates and only left-wing or left-leaning moderators will be allowed? No conservative voices will be represented inside of these debates. Is that, gonna, is that possibly going to play out in this election cycle? Well, look, like I said, fighting for fair debates has been a central tenet of what we're doing here, what we have been doing for years. We're going to keep up that fight. Hopefully, we're going to have even more debates. President Trump announced that he's accepted a debate at Fox News, for example. Now the, now the ball is in Joe Biden's court on that one. So we're going to keep on fighting for more debates. We're going to be fighting for conservative voices. We're going to be fighting for fair debates. But even if it is two versus one, two Democrats versus President Trump, we're confident President Trump will win those debates because Joe Biden's record is an absolute failure. Joe Biden can't even read from a teleprompter. He can't even go to a Wawa in a staged event and close a takeout box without embarrassing himself. President Trump has a strong record, a record that Americans support. Biden has a record of weakness and chaos. That record's going to come through in that debate where we're fighting for fair debates. We're fighting for more debates. But President Trump is willing to debate anytime, anywhere, anyplace. 
Well, I hope the RNC makes a stand uh, finally, because you, as you know, Tommy, uh, the, the, the Commission on Presidential Debates is patently unfair. It's left wing. It's slanted. And you know what? I think the Democrats deserve tough questions. But you know what? They get to, because, and the RNC has agreed up until this point, no, 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 no. Every Democrat gets to get patted on the bum bum and not take any tough questions. I hope this new RNC uh, abandons that premise because uh, I think Americans are sick and tired of having the press run cover for the Democrat Party. Meantime, Trump has also hinted that both candidates submit to a drug test before this debate. Is the RNC going to at least insist on that? Look, these conditions are going to be set ahead of the debate. We're fighting again for that fair debate. We do believe Americans deserve transparency. Joe Biden's health has been a major factor in terms of non-transparency. We've seen him hiding from physicals. We've seen him hiding the results of those. And we've seen him not take a cognitive test, even though the majority of Americans, including Democrats, have major questions about that. Americans deserve transparency. They deserve to know what's happening. They deserve to see Joe Biden stand up there and defend his record if he's able to. We don't think that he is able to. So I think transparency should be a guiding principle here. And we're going to be fighting for those fair conditions ahead of these debates to make sure that Americans see the debates that they deserve to see so they can make that decision comparing, again, Biden's weakness and chaos versus President Trump's record of strength and accomplishment. Well, at the very least, Americans will be secured when they watch Another Democrat hide behind the skirts of the biased press. At least we'll all see it. Finally, Tommy, the RNC just parted ways with Chief Counsel Charles Spies after less than two months on the job. Conservatives were, were critical about his position on election integrity. Can, can voters trust the RNC is going to be on top of voting integrity issues ahead of November's election? Look, election integrity is a massive focus here. We have launched with the Trump campaign an unprecedented 100,000 person strong election integrity program. We are engaged in lawsuits across the country, including delivering key victories already in key battleground states. We're going to continue that effort. We have a full time staff here. We have staff across the country in 15 battleground states, including for the House and Senate, not just the presidential. Election integrity is a major, major focus. One of the three fundamental priorities that the RNC has right now, the other two being raising money and getting out the vote, growing that vote, encouraging Americans to bank the vote. So we have that unprecedented election right. integrity program. We're going to have eyes on the ground and, and voters can cast the vote with confidence with that program. Thank you so much for listening to the Newsmax Daily Podcast today, Thursday, May 16th. My name is Kay Smythe, filling in for Tony Marino, and I'll be back tomorrow for more. God bless you and thank you so much for listening. News breaks every minute, every day. You need the app, the Newsmax app. Find it free on your smartphone store. Then watch us anytime, anywhere. It's our America. We conquered it. We built it. Great values like honesty and fairness. Great courage. A great nation needs a free press. Newsmax is it. 30 million Americans regularly go to Newsmax when they really need to know. They watch Newsmax TV at home on the free Newsmax app. They go to Newsmax.com. Start today. Newsmax is real news for real people.